Text 1. Adele Mania. Brisbane Lord Mayor Graham Quirk is confident there will be no impact on bus commuters after the massive Adele concerts this weekend. Sellout crowds of 60,000 meant the city's public transport system would struggle to ship audiences to the concert venue. To service the biggest music event in Queensland's history, Council has asked drivers to work at the weekend. But there were concerns it could affect operations on Monday because drivers require a 10-hour break between shifts. My expectation is that commuters will not experience impacts as a consequence of the Adele concerts, Quirk said. Courier Mail, 2017 Text 2 Picture not so perfect. More pictures are being taken now than at any point in history, and some people think that our obsession with capturing every event has gone too far. You can't go anywhere without seeing people peering through their phones at the world around them. Yet research suggests that when people take pictures of things instead of looking at them, they don't remember nearly so well. The constant threat of being photographed also makes it difficult to relax. How are you supposed to have a nice time when a camera could be thrust in front of your nose, capturing you with a big mouthful of food? Besides, some people add effects to their photos or alter them in some way, so they're not always what they seem. Instead of having real fun, people try to make sure it looks as though they are, just for a good snap. The Weak Junior, 2017 Text 3 Why teenage boys are so gawky One teenage boys really are as physically awkward as they appear, scientists have found. Two. Three. Four. Daily Mail, 2016. Text 4. Cartoons help raise public awareness. By Elena Kochanova. The United Nations Development Program recently launched a series of cartoons in Kazakhstan that aim to show how five easy life can be with green transportation alternatives and that green choices, including public transport and bicycles, could improve the environment, public ten safety and save time. The shorts are called Choose the Transport for Life, No Need for Superpowers if there is super transport, and safety, it's easy. Nicholas Jernaud an Almaty-based French cartoonist put in his ideas and experience to convey the message to the widest possible audience. Fifteen on choosing to do this work, Jernaud said, I have lived in Almaty since 2006, and as a cyclist and pedestrian I could not remain indifferent to the problem of air pollution in the city. Almaty's public transport department thinks the animations are an effective way to draw people's attention to the existing problems of 20 extreme air pollution in Almaty, where motorized transport accounts for 80% of pollution. Visual information is normally better and easier perceived by the public and plays an important role in forming its opinion. The Astana Times, 2015 Text 5 Digital Nomads Returning Home Adapted from an article by Alina Dizik One when Anna Wickham, 28 came back from 14 months of working as a digital nomad in the Philippines and Vietnam, she expected to settle back into her old life easily. But six months later, 
The Oklahoma City native is still readjusting to American ways. It takes no time to uproot yourself, but inputting yourself into a social ecosystem is more difficult, I'm still at it, said Wickham. Two after years on the road, the latest generation of digital nomads, people who work as they travel thanks to an increasing number of remote opportunities, have come back home with a message, it's not always a dream to work while traveling and reintegrating can be difficult. Though constant travel can start out to be exciting, eventually some degree of isolation sets in and may lead to more serious depression. Even keeping in touch virtually via video chat may not be enough since having a physical presence is key to warding off loneliness, according to Sean Truman, another former nomad. Three many digital nomads end up slowing down and eventually heading home. Take Taylor Pearson, 27. The digital marketer-turned-author is now settled in New York, but spent almost three years traveling to Brazil, Vietnam and Thailand. After months of travel, he wanted to settle down to spend longer in each place because he was having trouble finding enough jobs while switching destinations. Working in the U.S. has made it easier to find new business opportunities, he added. For because many of the digital nomads who boom around home had never planned to return or come back earlier than planned, the re-entry process can be both time-consuming and mentally draining at first, experts say. Keeping up with friendships while abroad can reap benefits once you've returned, Wickham advised. She hadn't worked hard to maintain friendships and since returning has had to reinvest in forging new relationships. Now, she tries to be in town to meet friends most weekends. Five many digital nomads end up creating hybrid lives, between periods of travel and having a home base, said Victoria Watts Kennedy, 32 founder of the Bridges and Balloons blog, which focuses on her current travels and life back home. She spent more than three years as a digital nomad with her now husband and visited more than a dozen countries in that time. Now back home in London, she continues to keep a flexible schedule to travel for weeks, sometimes months at a time. This year, she spent two months in New Zealand with her husband. It doesn't have to be all or nothing, she said. BBC.com, 2016 Text 6 Saving Wales is good for the planet and for Scotland. Adapted from an article by Ilona Amos one we have recently been treated to dramatic pictures of a humpback whale swimming in the Firth of Forth. It was a magnificent spectacle but a fairly nine one as humpbacks are relatively uncommon here. They were hunted to the brink of extinction around Scotland, but in recent years there has been an increase in their numbers. Two, this is good news and a reminder of the richness of marine life in our seas. Scottish waters are important for whales and dolphins, being home to or visited by 24 of the 83 aquatic mammals. Whales are fascinating and their survival is important for global biodiversity. But they also have an 10 value. They play a major part in our growing wildlife tourism industry, which is worth an estimated £127 million a year. Whale watching on the west coast brings in around £8 million. 
3. So it's good to know there is an army of experts out there monitoring and analyzing the activities of these fascinating creatures. These include the Scottish Marine Animal Stranding Scheme and the British Divers Marine Life Rescue, a group of volunteers on call 24 hours to help marine wildlife that is still alive when it comes ashore. A wealth of research is also carried out at Scottish universities and charities such as the Hebridean Whale and Dolphin Trust, and Whale and Dolphin Conservation. For commercial whaling has been a thing of the past in Scotland for half a century, and the signs suggest whale numbers are finally beginning to recover. But though they might be more likely to dodge a harpoon now, whales today face an increasing number of other dangers. I've never been lucky enough to see a live whale. Just a dead one, a young male sperm whale that washed up on the shores of the Forth after a suspected collision with a boat. Sadly it's a common fate. Whales also face harm from entanglement in fishing gear, pollution, Studies of 21 pilot whales that beached in Scotland in 2012 showed high levels of toxic chemicals in their bodies, and noise disturbance from naval sonar and acoustic surveys of the seabed. 5. Then there are mass strandings, which remain largely unexplained. Just last month more than 400 pilot whales came ashore on New Zealand's South Island at a spot notorious for strandings. Around 300 of the animals died. There have been various speculations as to the cause of such devastating events. Now research is underway to establish whether there could be a link with weather in outer space. Some experts believe magnetic anomalies and extraterrestrial meteorological phenomena could disorientate the animals. If they can establish a connection, researchers hope that observations of solar storms could serve as an early warning that strandings could occur. The results should be interesting. We've banned whaling for the most part and given the animals official protection. Now we must do more to minimize the impact of our actions on these majestic ocean giants. Scotsman.com, 2016 Text 7 The race is on to get young minds into design. Adapted from an article by Susan Elkin one had you visited the Design Museum shop in London earlier this year with £10 to spend, you might have bought an intriguing children's toy called Dazzle Racer. A self-propelled cylinder, it included a wind-up, elastic band-powered mechanism, minimal parts, all 100% recycled, and lots of stickers. It was good fun, simple, eye-catching, nostalgic and very original. Designed by a group of six year nine and year ten boys from Finchley Catholic High School, the toy was the winning entry in the museum's 2015 Design Ventura competition, which attracts hundreds of entries nationwide. To Catherine Ritman smith head of learning at the Design Museum, explains why schools participate in this competition. Teachers like it because the skills are all transferable and it helps to validate the value of design as a subject. 3. A new edition of Design Ventura starts when a single word theme is announced in the summer. This year it is change. Schools work with groups to produce imaginative design ideas for a product in simple. Materials that could sell for £10 in the Design Museum shop. Participating schools then register by November and eventually submit their design idea.
Along the way there is training for teachers and mentoring for students from designers. The icing on the cake is when the winners see their design on sale in the spring of the following year. For one of the really useful things about this competition, says teacher Liam Hurrican, is that there's 18 element because the product is going on sale for real and the boys had to learn about budgeting and marketing, as well as designing their game. Five profits go to charity. The winning team chooses where it wants the profits to go, says Ripman Smith. It costs the schools nothing to participate in Design Ventura, the professional designers who help out in the later stages of the project provide their services for free. 6. Ripman Smith adds, Design technology has become a tricky subject to make a case for and we've heard of departments closing in some schools. We find that if pupils take part in Design Ventura in Year 9 it can be the trigger which leads them to opt for it at GCSE 1, so we are helping to keep alive something which is crucial to industry and entrepreneurship. The Daily Telegraph, 2016 NEET 1 GCSE equals General Certificate of Secondary Education, Brit's Middle Bear School Examen. Text 8 Sean Conway swims the length of the British coastline. Hell and High Water by Sean Conway, Eberry Press £10.99 one as usual with books about crazed adventures and daft daring do, this one, about the author's attempt to swim the length of the British coastline, begins with an account of the twenty involved. However, very unusual for such books and adventures, Sean Conway's account is mainly about what he hasn't thought of doing. Two just weeks before his due to dive into the sea off land's end, he hasn't done any training or sought any funding and has no plan to speak of. Nor is this some long-held ambition of his. Indeed, it seems that he only thought of this ultra-long distance swim up the British coast because his attempt to cycle around the world didn't happen as he'd have wished. All was going well until he had a crash and, although he completed the Pan Global bike ride, it couldn't get him into the Guinness World Records. So, the swim is meant to fill that crucial gap in his CV. 3. Somehow, he manages to acquire three people to act as his support. Crew and a cut price yacht, leaving £110 in his budget for everything else. Supplies, equipment, the LOT. Not surprisingly, there are those who tell him he's crazy and that he'd be best off spending his last £110 on the medication his GP would surely be only too happy to prescribe. But on our hero plows, and eventually manages to get his support crew to lands and to start his big swim. For only to discover two problems. First, there's the temperature. I slowly walked into the water, Conway recalls, and was surprised at how cold it was. Right, the dot turns out the sea is not only cold, it apparently also has these things called tides. As he's settling down to his first crawl, it begins to dawn on Conway that he'll have to time his swims so that he's going with the tide rather than against it, because even Michael Phelps won at full tilt wouldn't be a match for the current and would start to go backwards. Which is exactly what happens to Conway. Five soon after, there's another problem, seasickness, for Conway, as well as two of his support crew. There are lots and lots of other dangers. Ahead, almost all of them coming as a shock to our fearless swimmer.
Six between Cornwall and the north coast of Scotland, there will be whirlpools, riptides, the mountainous seas off Cape Roth, busy shipping lanes, a tornado warning and toxic jellyfish. Plus his scabby toe gets worse daily, his wetsuit doesn't fit properly, he has to eat about 8,000 calories a day, often in mid-swim, and the protein shakes are giving him wind something dreadful. Seven Conway's original plan was that he'd be swimming for two months. Some thousand miles of coastline, 15 miles a day, 60 days swimming. Simple. Well, not quite. His daily distance is initially so low that, by his new calculations, it will take him two years to reach John O'Groats. Eight then, amazingly, he starts to grind out the miles. More calamities lie in store, running out of money, losing members of his support crew, but Conway copes with them all. And, astonishingly, remarkably and record-breakingly, 135 days after he walked into the surprisingly cold sea off. Land's End, he swims into John O'Groats Harbour. Adapted from an article from Daily Mail, 2015. Newt one Michael Phelps, Amerikaans Zwemmer die Media Gauden Olympisch Medales heeft gewonnen. Text 9. Made in Japan, games, anime and manga. One Shigeru Miyamoto, Toru Iwatani and Satoshi Tajiri may not be household names, but they have clearly left their mark on the world. They are the creators of Super Mario, Pac-Man and Pokemon respectively, and they can be said to be the robber barons of Japan's creative industry tapping the nation's unique cultural DNA to create characters that have stolen hearts all over the world. To a ministry report issued last April showed that the market size of Japan's content industry, which includes ACG, animation, comics and games, as well as TV drama and music, in 2013 was around 12 trillion yen. The Japanese market for content industries may be second only to the United States, worth over 2.5 times more. 27 growth is slowing and the industry ought to increase its presence in foreign markets. 3. It was the love for video gaming that led programmer Mr. Michael Sasecchio, 28, to work as a game developer. But he is worried that Japan will not be able to compete with Western studios. Mr. Sasecchio said that English standards have to be raised to allow Japan to continue to reach new heights at the same pace as the West. He added, technology evolves from the spread of information, and with so much information on the internet being available in English only. It takes much longer for information to reach Japanese developers. This point was also raised by Mr. Hisatsugu Kasajima, founder of the Japan arm of Czech production House Ealing. He attributes the lack of interest in English to an insular, inward-looking mindset that has led to stagnation. For Hideo Uda, Founder of a Japanese animation studio, noted that the anime industry is hindered from becoming a major player like Disney or Pixar because it uses conventional pen and paper methods, which he said are increasingly unproductive in a fast-moving industry. As craftsmen, they have very good techniques. That is an advantage, Mr. Uda said but it is also a disadvantage. Innovation hardly takes place and not many people can be involved in the process. So it will remain a 30 without any cross-border collaboration. 
5. Given that ACG is a costly business, companies are trying to diminish risks by sharing the burden across several stakeholders, which means that the future of the anime industry will lie in the hands of the financiers, not the creators. But these bankers have a record of not having a pulse on the market. A recent example was historical anime Kono Sakaino. Katasumi Ni, in this corner of the world, which was a sleeper hit in Japan. It failed to get financial backing and was produced only after it. Raised funds through crowdfunding. It then became an enormous success. Adapted from an article from straightstimes.com, 2017. Text 10. HET Vulgent Fragment is HET Begin Van Hooft Stuck 9 Van HET Boek Dead Man's Time, over in Politegent in Brighton, Geschrieven door Peter James, 2013. 9. Whenever Roy Grace left his front door he was always on guard. After over 20 years as a cop, looking around for anything unusual or out of place had long become second nature. It used to irritate his former wife, Sandy. One time, during his early days as a detective constable, He'd five spotted a man slipping a handbag off the back of a chair in a crowded pub, and chased him a mile on foot. It had been the end of their evening, as he'd had to spend the next four hours booking the thief into custody and filling out forms. Often when he and Sandy were out for a meal, she would notice his eyes ten roving and kick him sharply under the restaurant table, hissing, stop it. Grace. But he couldn't help it. In any public place, he couldn't relax unless he knew he was somewhere where there were no obvious villains, and no immediate signs of anything about to kick off. Sandy used to joke that fifteen while other women had to be wary of their men ogling other women, she had to put up with him ogling Brighton's pond life. But there was one thing he never told her, because he didn't want to worry her. He knew, like all police officers, there was always the danger of retribution by an aggrieved villain. Most crims accepted getting arrested, twenty-some saw it as part of the game, some shrugged at the inevitability, some just gave up the ghost from the moment the handcuffs were snapped in place. But there were a few who harbored grudges. Part of the reason judges traditionally wore wigs was to disguise themselves, so they would not be recognized later by those they had sent 25 down. The police had never had such 35. But even if they had, to someone who was determined enough, there were plenty of other ways to track them down. Text 11. R.C. gives Shakespeare a good rap. Adapted from an article by Nicola Woolcock. 1. The lyrical beauty of Shakespeare's language does not appear to have much in common with the often coarse, violent and expletive-filled utterances of rap music. But the Royal Shakespeare Company, R.C., is drawing parallels with hip-hop to try to promote the bard's plays to today's youth. It says that a fun new app for mobile phones will help a new generation of young people relate to the playwright's work. To the Hip-Hop Shakespeare quiz challenges teenagers to work out which lines are from Shakespeare and which from the rapper Akala. The task of distinguishing Shakespeare from its more modern lyrical counterpart is less easy than it first appears. Lines that the app uses from Shakespeare, for example, would not be out of place in a rap, 
The first thing we do, let's kill all the lawyers, Henry VI, part 2, and, it is certain I am loved of all ladies, much ado about nothing. 37, lines written by Carla, younger. Brother of the rapper Ms. Dynamite, sound positively Shakespearean. Strange is the fruit that nourishes not the vein, and how is this more sophisticated than savagery? 3. The app is being downloaded by schools to coincide with the start of term in just over a week. It is aimed at teenagers accustomed to snacking on online content, whose attention spans may initially be too short for a play. Users can lip-sync lines and star in a dub-smash-style video, where their phone records them mouthing famous quotes while a voiceover makes them sound more Shakespearean. The app also allows users to mix Shlomo, a beatboxer, with Shakespeare to create a shareable track, and to guess what Shakespeare lines mean. For Jonathan Naylands, Associate Dean of Creativity at Warwick Business School, said that using modern cultural reference points like hip-hop would stress the musicality and rhythm of Shakespeare's words better than the deadly dull read around the class. He added, one concern for me is whether the app will excite users with the power of the plays to be performed and enjoyed as plays. Having Shakespeare as a choice in your life often depends on having a passionate teacher or family member who teaches you how to enjoy his work. The Times, 2015 Text 12 Avoid muddy walks by Miles Dilworth Dog owners have been warned not to walk their pets in muddy areas following the rise of a mysterious deadly disease. Alabama rot, which kills 80% of affected animals, is set to claim a record number over this year. The illness often goes undetected until it is too late as initial bee appear simply as cuts and sores on a pet's legs. Little is known about the disease and its rise has baffled C, who have not yet found an effective treatment for it. Cases have increased since it arrived in the UK in 2012, when there were six cases. This grew to 19 in 2016 and 40 in 2017. This year there have been 29 cases already. Infections seem to occur in muddy areas, although this is yet to be proven, so D should wash their dogs if they walk in mud. The Dogs Trust advises the following, where possible, stick to dry paths and keep your dog out of muddy or wet areas, check their legs for any lesions or wounds. Daily Mail, 2018 Text 13 Pristine Beaches What do an unbroken light bulb, a telegraph pole weighing one ton and a scaffold clamp from World War II have in common? The answer is that these items have all been washed up on British beaches. Waste materials in our seas have a far-reaching impact, not only for marine life with hundreds of species eating or becoming entangled in litter, but also for the tourism and fishing industries. With beach cleans and littering surveying programs taking place countrywide, there are lots of opportunities to put on strong gloves and head for the coast to help out. For more about the Marine Conservation Society and its events all over the UK, visit mcsuck.org. Country Living, 2017 Text 14 Roll with it One wheel top speed, 15 miles per hour range, 7 miles charging time, 20 minutes 
This 30-inch long board with a huge wheel suspended in the middle might seem like an accident waiting to happen. But cruising on the one wheel is not as daunting as it might look, thanks to a gyroscope and accelerometer embedded in the platform. That said, the one wheel is challenging to get the hang of. It took me about two very fraught minutes to get comfortable enough to inch forward on my own. Ten minutes later I was able to make tentative wide turns. Before long, though, I got it. The 11-inch airfield tire, I discovered, flies over rough road and sand with barely a hiccup. $1,499, rideianwill.com Iohawk top speed, 6.2 miles power range, 12 miles charging time, 3 hours. The Iohawk is like the Segway, just stand and lean, but you don't look as dorky on one. Unlike Segway, the Iohawk has no dignity abusing handle poking up. Each wheel can be controlled separately, it's like having two gas pedals, so I had no trouble making tight turns. And since the wheels can spin forward and backward, twirling in place is very easy. A few seconds after hopping on, I was whizzing around with confidence as the electric motor whirred beneath me. This is what it would feel like to have wheels for feet. Before long, I was hooked. I'd even look for excuses to roam the office with it. It's a great way to get to the water cooler and back. $1,800, iohawk.com Rocket skates are 10 top speed, 12 miles power range. 10 miles charging time, 2.5 hours. Yes, these self-propelled roller skates were inspired by Roadrunner cartoons in which Huali, Coyote supercharges his roller skates using dynamite. Thankfully, these use 55 watt motors. After you step into the rocket skates and buckle them over your shoes, you begin as you would with traditional skates, push off on your dominant foot. Once both skates are rolling, you can activate their motors by tilting your foot forward. To break, lean back on your heels. Sounds easy enough, but it took me about an hour to feel steady on my motorized feet. Two motors is a lot to keep track of, which I realized when my feet would pull in different directions if I went duck toed. You don't need skating experience, but it is definitely helpful to have clock time at the roller rink. $699, actonglobal.com Wall Street Journal, 2015